So there are different types of lasers out there from diode, fiber, CO2 lasers. So really, which one is the best one to get? So I'm gonna dive into each one, what they do, and help you make a decision on what's gonna work best for you so that you don't have to buy something that's hundred dollars or thousands of dollars and waste your money. So let's get into it. Okay, so first off the bat, we're gonna talk about diode lasers. Diode lasers are typically your cheaper lasers on the spectrum. You can get them for 150 bucks to really 800 bucks or more, uh, depending on if you go with brands like Ortor or Xtool, those are some of your name brand diode lasers. Now they're not bad lasers, but you gotta know the limitations. Ortor makes really low wattage ones, say around like a two watt, uh, whereas your X-Tool, they might have a 10, 20, or 40 watt laser. So the main thing that you wanna know is if you're getting a lower wattage diode laser, you're not gonna be able to cut through anything. You're only going to be able to engrave. The other thing is the speed. Speeds on diode lasers are so slow, especially with like a Ortor. Um, you're not winning any races, so, but if you're doing this for a hobby, then it might be a good machine for you. Uh, you can engrave on stuff like wood. You could engrave on uh, anodized metal. So if it's something with a thin coating, you should be fine. Um, you could engrave on colored acrylic. For whatever reason, I don't know the science behind it, but diode lasers are a blue light uh, laser, and for whatever reason, they don't engrave on clear. I know there's some hacks out there, but I didn't go into that. Um, but when I did have a diode laser, I did notice that clear acrylic wasn't something on their list. Um, but again, you, you're only gonna be able to engrave stuff. So if that's all you're wanting to do and you're purchasing, say, the blanks from another company to be able to engrave, then that would be a perfect option. Again, if you're not worried about the speed. Now, when you get into like X-Tools uh, diode lasers that are 10, 20, 40 watt, those are gonna be faster machines and you will be able to cut certain types of material, but it's only gonna be like eighth inch material, um, maybe thinner. The other thing is, if you go on their website and some of these other websites that claim, oh, it can cut a quarter inch material. Yes, it probably can, but it's gonna take multiple passes. It's not gonna be very fast, but it can do it. So again, if this is something that maybe it's a hobby or a side hustle, then it's gonna be fine. You're gonna be okay. Uh, so I definitely suggest diode lasers in that 20 watt range where you can cut material, you can engrave a lot of different things like coated metal, slate, you can uh, engrave and cut on wood, paper, all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, you definitely want to stay away from certain plastics because they can be toxic. So on all types of lasers, definitely be careful and know what you're engraving and whether or not it's harmful. Okay, so jumping into the CO2 lasers, there's a couple things that you have to consider, and the first one is going to be price. So you can get smaller desktop CO2 lasers for say around 1500 bucks, but they're gonna go up from there. I mean, the one behind me is a 60 watt CO2 laser from OM Tech. Uh, the whole setup, it's gonna cost around $4,000, and the thing that you need to know about CO2 lasers is you, unless you get a certain brand like an Eon or Thunder where it has built-in chillers and all the accessories built in, you need to know that, okay, you got the CO2 laser, you need to get a chiller, nine times out of 10, you're gonna wanna upgrade the air assist. Uh, so that involves getting a smaller air compressor. So there's other things that you're gonna need to get that going especially if you go with OM Tech. Um, so there are additional costs. The other thing is what wattage do you choose? Same way with the diode laser, you have different wattages, but these are gonna be a lot higher. So there might be some that are 50, 60, 
uh, 80, 100, 130 are your, your typical for most people. So I kind of regret getting the 60 watt. I really wish I had got the 80 watt just to be able to cut a little bit thicker and faster, but just know this is light years away from a diode laser in my opinion when it comes to cutting and engraving and that's the main thing for wanting to choose a co2 laser over a diode laser it's going to be that yes you can still engrave on the material that a diode laser but much faster the main thing is you're going to be able to cut on like eighth inch wood or half inch wood quarter whatever depending on the wattage a lot faster some of these machines you might have to do multiple passes but even the 60 watt i can cut a quarter inch material with one pass so if you're trying to step from that hobby stage to a side hustle or into a business you definitely want to consider a co2 laser uh, for what you're trying to do if time is a big factor and it should be it should be so just know that co2 lasers you can cut faster, cut thicker, engrave a lot faster. Um, if you get the larger machines that you can put a rotary attachment, you can cut, or excuse me, you can engrave on powder coated metal tumblers. Um, the stainless steel tumblers, you cannot engrave on bare metal. And I'll go over the machine that can do that here in a second. So a lot of opportunities, especially when, in, when you get into sizes like this, where if it has a pass through, where you can run the material from the front through the back, uh, you can engrave on a larger uh, or cut on a larger material. So overall, bigger machine, more powerful, equals faster and uh, larger material. Okay, so next on our list is gonna be the fiber laser. Most of your fiber lasers, cost-wise, are gonna run two grand or more. Most of these are gonna be desktop versions of fiber lasers, and your cutting surfaces typically are somewhere around like a five by five square, seven by seven square, uh, depending on the manufacturer. So completely different across the board as far as what they offer. There's also different wattages. Uh, I do know that they also make CO2 um, fiber hybrids. I don't know really too much about those, so I won't talk uh, a lot about that. Uh, definitely do your research on something like that. But the fiber laser is going to be geared towards the guys and gals that want to engrave and etch metal. So if you're thinking about doing like uh, pew pew slides, you know, and you want to engrave on the side of that, uh, you want to look at a fiber laser that's actually going to etch into the metal. Uh, or like uh, like brass jewelry or something like that uh, where you want real fine detail and, sh and on the metal versus, again, removing the coating. We're talking about actually etching the metal is where you want to go with a fiber laser. Uh, the cool thing is they're really fast, really fast. So you can pump out a lot um, depending on what model you get, like the... Uh, say the X-Tool F1 Ultra, I believe, uh, it's small enough where you could take it to trade shows, you could take it to craft fairs, and you'll really set it up anywhere and, and make a lot of really cool stuff. You'll jewelry or you'll engrave on personalized items. Like if you had a stock of blanks and uh, that's all you did was engrave it, perfect. Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't know too much about the cutting capabilities on one. Definitely look into that. I just know that mostly fiber lasers are going to be geared towards engraving on metal. Um, a lot of different options, again, with Xtool as far as their software and what they can do. And I'm not sponsored by Xtool. I've just seen a lot of videos that really intrigue me. Um, I saw one where they engraved on a coin and it was like a 3D engraving but not just the surface, it actually etched and took away the metal uh, and made it a 3D coin. It was really, really cool. So uh, kind of just to wrap up this as far as, uh, again, what's gonna be best for you, dyed lasers, cheaper lasers, 
uh, mostly just engraving. Some of them will cut thinner material. You step up to the CO2 lasers and no matter if you get a desktop laser or one of the bigger machines, you can do thicker material, engrave a lot faster. And the fiber lasers, of course, are gonna be for the metal. So guys, I hope this helped you out. If you got value out of this type of content, I greatly appreciate if you hit that subscribe button, definitely give me a like. And if you have any comments or questions, let me know. Appreciate you guys. I hope you all have a good day.